welcome to another video. So I've got a lot of questions about what it's like being a 3D artist and my one year anniversary is in May. So I figured it's a good time to make a video answering your guys' questions since by now I would hope I'd know a thing or two. So let's get to it. First question, how many hours a week do you put into your business? It really, really ranges. Um, I would say anywhere between 30 to 80 hours. Um, I usually work on the weekends as well. I don't really have like set days off. I try to take Sundays or Saturdays off just to have a sense of normalcy. Um, for the most part, I work a little bit every day. And a lot of those hours are answering emails and clients and marketing and not just content creation, but I'll get into that because I think that's one of the other questions. How many of those hours go into creating content versus marketing? Yeah, there's the question. So. I would say in the beginning, it was like 70, 30. I was spending so much time marketing and building a fan base versus actually creating content. As of now, I wanna say it's probably 55, 60, 40, that's a nicer number. 60% um, creating content, 40% marketing. Um, it really, just, just make sure you have a fan base. If you're making lots of art, but no one cares about it, you're not gonna make a living. It's just kind of the blunt truth about it. Because again, keep in mind, this whole video is about being a 3D artist professionally, not as a hobby. So don't take that too discouraging if you just wanna do it for fun. What websites, forms, etc., should I participate in to help grow a fan base? Oh, this is like the question of social media and I don't really have a great answer because it's super specific. If you wanna do what I do, which is not just 3D modeling, it's not just 3D printing, it is 3D modeling for 3D prints for tabletop. It's really niche, guys. So I went to Reddit and I found the subreddit Printed Minis and Facebook, the Tabletop Guild for 3D Printing. Pretty sure that's right. And those two are probably my favorites for sharing my work. Just going to any cubic photon or like the subreddit 3D Printing and spamming my work isn't gonna grow me a fan base. I might be like, oh, here's a like, here's an upvote. But no one's gonna take the time to be like, wow, I really like that. Because keep in mind, if you are an, an artist and you're trying to make a living off of it, you're asking for people's time. So really try to appreciate what that means. Because as you scroll through things, there are lots of things that want your attention. Constantly, there are things that want your attention. So you have to be better than that or more interesting than that. So just keep that in mind and really try to keep your, any ads that you do really short and to the point and just don't waste people's time. <laughs> what is the minimum number of models you should plan to create monthly? I would say 10. Um, I'm just making up a number, but that, that sounds right. If you can't create a great model in three days, you don't have the chops to do this professionally quite yet. Now, of course, if you're making like a gigantic like warship or a dragon, that doesn't apply. I'm trying to think about like general minis. You can't make one in three days. You're probably setting yourself up for failure. Make sure you work quickly and you work well. Keep in mind, like I understand like as artists, a lot of us are really neurotic perfectionists. It kind of just comes with the territory, but you gotta learn when to move on. Not just cutting corners, but like, for example, if you're obsessing on the stitching on a shoulder pad for a 3D printed miniature that's a dwarf, you see this thing. <laughs> you can't really see it and much less paint it super well anyway. So just move on. Eventually there'll be so many stitches or just get a stitch brush like I did and you'll just get better at it, you know what I mean? Naturally, and it's not worth spending two hours when you could have already started a new model. So yeah. What kind of marketing do you employ? Honest marketing. Don't be obnoxious. Please, please don't be that person who is like, um, here is here are my models. I have two models. Please go support me on Patreon. Please don't be that person. In the beginning, it was kind of cute because it was new. I did it, but I could get away with it because again, it was new, but now everyone's doing it and no one likes it. Make sure you have good stuff and you have a good reason for people to support you. Otherwise, it's just, what is that? The Kermit the Frog meme where it's just like money. <laughs> that's, that's what it looks like. And I'm still kind of like that. I definitely want money. Just be more honest about it. So what I do is I find models I'm really proud of like I shared my wind elemental on Reddit a few days ago because I freaking love it. And it wasn't like, please support me on Patreon. I mentioned in the description that it's not available on Thingiverse yet, but it will be in April. So just wait and it's coming. If you really can't wait, there's a Patreon. I didn't even link it though. It's still on my Thingiverse only. And I'm not doing that to try and be inconvenient. I'm doing it because 
model first, money later. It's really annoying people get that confused and they're just like putting it in your face like, please give me money. Stop. <laughs> love your work. People will eventually love it too, hopefully, if it's good. If it speaks to them, they will try to find a way to give you money. Don't worry. <laughs> it's awesome. Even if it's not the easiest thing to find, they'll find it. What kind of records do you need to keep for taxes slash accounting? So this is my binder. It's very simple. It's very thin because it's 2020 and all of it's online for the most part. You need to keep all of your receipts if they're tax deductible. Don't be ridiculous, please. Like I know there are some people that get really cute about it and try to evade taxes because like this lipstick I'm wearing, it was like $7. Ooh, I can tax deduct that because I use it in the video. Don't. It's a luxury expense. It doesn't count. Make sure it's only used for the business. Like your internet, for example, people will tax deduct that. You can't unless you literally only use the internet for business and there's no way that that's what you do. Um, <laughs> so you can do partial deductions, but it's a mess. Just keep it really simple. You bought a printer, that's tax deductible. You bought resin, that's tax deductible. Cause I use my printer and my resin for my Etsy. I don't run my own games yet. So if I bought a printer that was just for personal use, I wouldn't tax deduct that. Uh, Cause eventually I want a DM and it's going to be amazing. And I'm gonna print hundreds of things and paint them. No, I'm not, but you know what I mean? That would be different. That's not business. Just make sure you're honest and keep all of your receipts. If they're digital, make a spreadsheet, keep track of them. If they're physical, keep them in a binder. I try to avoid physical because it's messy. How long does it take for a business like yours to earn a living? Um, I think this is kind of a ridiculous question because it's so specific to each situation. So here is my not helpful answer that is specific to me. It took me less than a year because I was super broke, guys. I had no expenses. My boyfriend and I in 2018 made less than 20,000 for sure. Did we even make 15? Yeah, I think we made 15. My boyfriend was working full time 40 hours a week and I was a college student who did a bunch of different side jobs and whatnot. And again, we made like no money. So we didn't have any expenses for the most part uh, until like you're 26, at least in the United States, you don't pay health insurance, you can stay on your parents' plan. So I don't have to pay health insurance yet either. My expenses are super low and I didn't have pets then. Now I have an obnoxious parakeet and I love him. But that's my point. So it didn't take me very long because I didn't have a lot I needed to make. Now I would just take a general formula, take how much your expenses are. And yes, I count savings as expenses because that's guaranteed money I'm putting aside. I'm paying myself, which is an expense. That's how I try to do that. Anyway, and then multiply it times like three or five, somewhere in between there. And that's when you know that you were good to quit your full-time job and this business would then be able to sustain what you need. What are the setup costs for your business? So I'm specifically just a 3D artist. The 3D printing stuff is fun, but it's more on the side, but it's very, very nice to be able to print your stuff because I do pre-support STLs. So I needed um, four things. I needed a laptop, a laptop that could run ZBrush specifically. So that's that was like a thousand dollars. ZBrush is eight hundred dollars, and then I had my tablet, which is four hundred dollars when I got it, and a printer, which is two to three hundred dollars. So whatever that adds up to, <laughs> that's how much it was roughly for me to start out. Do you need a business license? Yes, because I live in Fresno, California, in the United States of America, and so I need to pay like twenty dollars. It was super dumb because I needed to do zone clearance. I work in my apartment. And it was like, oh, do people come to the door? I'm like, no, it's online, which Fresno is a little, um, what's the word for antiquated? There's behind a, the times. Behind the times. And anyway, they could not understand that my business was online. So I have to pay for my apartment to have zone clearance, even though like, I know guys, it's dumb. Anyway, that's Fresno. It's not very expensive. If you live in California, I didn't have to file, I did not have to file a business license because I'm a sole proprietor. If I was anything else, I would have needed to. So just check your states and laws in cities. It's so boring guys. And a lot of it's contradictory and awful and tedious, but it'll be worth it. Cause once you do it once, it kind of takes care of itself. <laughs> what should you charge for STL files? I can't remember who asked me this, but like, do you know how I am? All my stuff is free. Like, whatever. I'm gonna answer your question anyway, but like, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously that didn't work for me. <laughs> like my Kickstarter, for example, it's 20 models for $10. That's a terrible business model, obviously, but there's a lot of you. So I'm making like several thousand dollars. 
Um, I would say if you're doing like one-off models, do between at least $2 to $5, just because $1 don't add up super quickly and $2 is like, oh cool, that's worth something. A dollar I feel like is too low. If you look at my mini factory, I think I have two things for sale for a dollar. <laughs> I don't follow my own advice. And that's not like a source of income for me. Anyway, somewhere between that. Obviously if it's like a multi-part dragon that has been really well keyed, you can do between 10 to $20. People that get like, I've seen people that try to sell their models for like $25 a piece and they're like really detailed busts and stuff, but that's that's tough and usually copyrighted material. Like here's Deadpool and they'll sell it. You can't do that. Stop. So yes, one to five dollars. Two to five dollars. <laughs> don't ask me these questions. I don't even do this. <laughs> what should you charge for 3D prints? Ah, a question I can answer. So I charge about $10 for my prints on Etsy. Um, and that includes with free shipping. So essentially charge a minimum of $5. I see some very sweet souls on there on Etsy that sell 3D prints between two to $4. And I don't know why or how they're making any money. Um, don't, don't. <laughs> you have a skill. You are not only 3D printing something, you're post-processing it, sanding it, priming it. Those are all good skills. You'd be amazed how many people cannot prime a model for painting without filling in all the details. So make sure you value yourself. So there are a ton of shops on Etsy that have better deals than I do, but I think we have like almost 400 sales now because people do equate money to value, even if it's not there. There was a study, I can't remember what it was from, but essentially I'll tell it to you guys anyway, story time. Um, it was some old shop and they had these turquoise necklaces and they weren't selling. So the guy was like, hey, mark them half off. But the sales guy misread it as times two instead. I don't know how. And they all sold out the next day. It is a true story. I think it's people have heard it before. Essentially, if something is sold for more, people just naturally think that it's worth more. But you have to walk that fine line of like, oh, there's no way it's worth that much. But you'd be surprised. What I'm trying to say is you can get away with charging things for more than you probably expect. If you undersell yourself, people will then undervalue you coming from the artist who doesn't sell her models because <laughs> I sell myself <laughs> what forms of income do you have this is such a good question I will try to not forget any Ricky's in the back so he'll catch me if I do in no particular order it's patreon kickstarter etsy amazon affiliates website. or website I'm missing some how many is that five there's, five. there's seven. Commissions. Commissions. Did I say Kickstarter? Yes. Okay, well there's six I can think of for now. And eventually probably YouTube. But I don't have enough watch hours because I make all my live streams unlisted for my $10 patrons. Otherwise I'd be able to monetize these. Ads are coming guys, just be patient. <laughs> How do you protect your IP? It just happens naturally. Like if you make something, it's yours. Ricky made these super sexy business cards. This logo. It's our design, this whole thing is ours. Why? Because we made it. That's just how copyright law works. If some dude in China were to take that and sell a million of them, guess what I would do? Nothing. It's not worth my time, guys. I have people that sell my stuff all the time. I don't care. Like I used, it used to super piss me off. And then I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I would way rather, instead of spending 10 minutes to angrily file whatever copyright claim, just make a new model. The caveat to that, I think it was a Lego who were using my models to advertise their water washable resin without asking me, that's not cool. That's different. I try to hold businesses to a higher standard, but if just like some dude is like making my models in Japan, I don't care. Like it's scummy and illegal, but there's not a ton you can do, honestly, which I know sounds disheartening, but honestly, once they're overseas, and I don't just mean like China, Japan, like anywhere it's not the United States, they have different laws it's really, really hard to sue people at that point. And they know that, and that's why they do it. Just calm your jets, guys. Make more art. Don't focus on it. Not a professional legal advice, but yes. <laughs> Who do you recommend creates a Patreon? People that actually have something to offer. And yes, shots fired. I see people that create Patreons for the sake of it all the time. If people don't know who you are, you're pretty much just screwed from the start. And if you don't have incredible work, it's not gonna happen. Again, I got away with a lot of this because 
when I did it, it was not a ton of people were doing it. I got in at a very um, lucky time, I would say. At this point, my blogs are fantastic. I know that I'm and likable and interesting and honest. I try my best. Um, so yeah, those two things are why I'm here. But there was a good amount of luck that seeded how I got here. So don't create a Patreon just for the sake of it. Chances are, if no one has asked you, like, hey, where can I give you money? No one's looking. And it's always weird to have a Patreon that has like hundreds of posts with no one supporting them. Honestly, and this is just kind of a weird side note, I would recommend you set up a Patreon, ask friends and family, just try to get to 10, at least like 10 people. Um, I think I was a patron of myself at first, just so it wasn't zero and looked all weird. I know Ricky was, Ricky still is. Yeah, I still pay a dollar every month. <laughs> to our own business. We can really cancel that. Probably, but... It's not about being dishonest, guys. It's about seeming credible at all. Um, if it just says zero, I'm telling you, it's just like, it just doesn't look super good. I can do a whole video about that. But anyway, have something to offer. Be a real person and be likable. I'll probably make a different video about this, but the short summary of it is in 2020, to be an artist, it's not about having great work. There are a lot of artists out there that are better than me, that will, I will eventually be better than them. I'm working very hard. But as of right now, definitely better than me. Um, <laughs> um, have better things to offer, have better deals. There's always something. But the one thing they don't have is they aren't me. They aren't literally me. And it's like, oh, that sounds full of yourself. Yes, but it's not so much that I'm just so desirable people give me money. It's the fact that I'm myself up front. So it's easier for people to connect with your work when they know who made the work. It just adds another layer of interest and connection. And if you don't put yourself out there, then it's just your work. And again, there are people that are always gonna be better, you know? So try and sell the one thing that no one else can, which is yourself. But don't be a sellout because the internet is mean. Damn, they know. There's been a few times I've made posts that were a little like advertising and fake and like people knew. I was impressed. I was like, oh, I can't just be fake. Darn, because I love doing that. <laughs> oh, that went on a weird tangent. Be yourself, you'll make money, I promise. Unless you're lame, then I guess you won't. <laughs> Helpful advice from me. <laughs> Should you create your own website as a Patreon alternative? Absolutely not. Uh, people want brand recognition. You can make one after the fact. I do, m3mprints.com in the description. If you're already a patron, please look at it. I get more money if you go there. The point being, people are going to want to go to a place that is more recognizable. I used to sell 3D prints on my website and they were cheaper. And I had one sale and that was like two days ago. I took them all down since then because I don't, there's no point. Meanwhile, Etsy have like over 400. People don't want to buy stuff from some like random site. They have to like really trust you and, and know you. I don't know what it is. It's brand recognition. There's psychology behind that. Use Patreon. They build a platform. It's become recognizable. Awesome. And then you can make your own website and kind of like shuttle people that way. Make sure you have a good website. I'm trying to redesign mine to be less, less the way it is. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I know that some things are a little all over the place because it's hard to answer certain things. I know my commentary about selling yourself as an artist can be confusing. And again, if you want me to explain that in detail, I will try to articulate it to be less of a mess. Um, I can make a different video about that. But other than that, these were your guys' questions. If you have more and there's at least 10 questions, I will make a part two. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.